It's Sarah Love, it's Hip Hop, it's the One Extra Mix Show. Now, earlier this week, I was in um, the presence of legendary status hip hop artists. I was DJing alongside the Souls of Mischief at Jazz Cafe in London. They're in Europe at the moment promoting their new album, which is called Montezuma's Revenge. And so, you know, I had to catch up with them. I did an interview with them for my TV show, Soul Power. And I was like, nah, Hip Hop Mix Show listeners, they need some of that Souls of Mischief goodness in their life. So without further ado, let's get into this exclusive interview just for you. Here's what happened. Sarah Love. Sarah Love. For real, y'all. I'm joined by one of the most lovely groups I've ever met in hip hop, Souls and Mischief. How are you doing, guys? What's up? What's up? It's very lovely hey. to have you here. But I see you're missing. One of you isn't here. Where's A plus at? Man, he's back home holding it down, but you know, with us in spirit. Yeah. Definitely. We all still together, you know what I mean? But just couldn't make it this particular trip. Yeah. Be, we'll be back all together. And we were rocking the other day at Jazz Cafe in London, and the show yeah. was extremely fresh. How's the UK tour been so far? been beautiful it's always good we always get a lot of love when we come out here so big up London because they always come out and I show know. Love. good vibes in the building but this is like 10 years since your last album and that's a long wait like what's been happening between the last record and now man really we've just been touring and uh, promoting other projects on our label like you said we're indie so uh, we had two Hyrule albums since then right uh, Full Circle and Full Circle Live also had a bunch of solo records. A plus dropped his. I dropped mine. Oak, Oak dropped two. So really, when we tour together, first of all, we're half a high row. So if we go out as high row, we're all out on the road. Mm. And when we got individual uh, projects out, we also are on the road together because we tour. You know, tour as a group. So it doesn't feel like ten years to us. Yeah. And then when you look up and you finally do drop a record, it, it's tight. But also the fact that we were, uh, got the opportunity to work with Prince Paul, that, that's the main reason why it was time to drop another record. I mean, that's like a dream come true. So Tell me about it. He's it like a bona fide legend in popular music, not just in hip hop, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, what's it like collaborating with him? Because he's executive produced the entire album, right? Yeah, he had the vision. He wanted to produce a group. I mean, you know, he's one of the most normal dudes you probably ever meet. You know what I'm really? saying? But, yeah, but like... He's, he's not a, a diva. Nah, nah, nah. nah. At the same, you know, with that being said, it's like he's a perfectionist the same way we are. So it was a perfect mesh because, um, you know, he would just be like, you know, you guys just just do your thing. You know what I'm saying? He just, like, he'll play something. We'd be like, whoa. And he'd be like, look, like, y'all like that? Like, <laughs> he'd be like, man, everything you play. Like, we, you know, we had a hard time deciding which, which tracks we wanted to use. But, um... But yeah, working with him was amazing. We've, we've all been fans of Prince Paul yeah. for years. so. And the hip hop mix show listeners have been loving the new records. like, And all the tunes, they just they keep growing on you. So I'm so excited to see like how this whole record is going to pan out. Yeah. But you know, you guys are like torchbearers for the indie scene kind of thing. Like you've mm -hmm. been indie nearly your entire careers. Yeah. Like, what's the secret to making that situation work? Because not everyone manages to do it. I think it's really based off of our love for the music, you know what I mean? I, I think when people get caught up in just focusing strictly on the hustle side of things, we've been doing it for almost 20 years now, you know what I mean? And so that's what I think provides the fire for the dedication. Can I just say you don't look old enough to have been doing it for like 20 years? <laughs> like, I never guess that you're old enough. Well, that's professional, <laughs> you know what I mean? We was doing it before that and, uh, you know, we just... L had love for the for the whole culture the fact that we all were you know break dancing doing graffiti um, DJing MCing just doing all elements of hip hop it kind of helps you know push you forward in, the, in, in the, being an independent artist and provides that dedication you know what I mean and that vision that we have to communicate with people around the world mm. so what would be your advice then for like indie artists who you know want to make moves professionally like what's the single best piece of advice you could offer really i think it's about originality because souls of mischief and hieroglyphics came in and had such a different kind of style um i think that's what keeps the longevity initially that's what's going to draw people into you as well you know what i mean and there's a lot of copycats kind of piggybacking off another the next man's style or whatever 
and I think uh, you can get you can just get lost in the in the sea of just look alikes and sound alikes, you know. Yeah. So if you try to maintain your originality, don't use the same vocabulary words that these other guys use. You know what I mean? Don't I say know. their don't use their sayings. And if the guy is going yo yo hey hey, and he, that's his saying, don't go yo yo hey hey. Say something else. You know what I mean? Before you get into the getting into your verse, man. I mean, I think that originality has been lost in hip hop. And I think with the new generation of, of MCs coming up, that's where they are shining because they are original and they're different from everybody else. Exactly, and that's what we like. But how does the label run, like, on a practical level? Like, how does that all operate, Taj? Well, I run the label, but we just make music, man. The rest of the stuff is, like, so sidelined to the point of negatives. <laughs> but it's because we are musicians, you know what I'm saying? Though, like, it's, it's fun to have a, a great symbol like the Hyro Icon. Mm -hmm. that can always you know sell t-shirts and hats and all that but when it comes down to it if we didn't have any music none of this would be possible so really the label is like a, a cell phone and, and, and the e -fax. you know what i'm saying though it's really about traveling and interfacing with the people because when it comes down to it our job is really rocking live shows and rocking the studio so it's great that we can team up with with like corporate giants you know what i'm saying or like car companies and things like that yeah. who can help spread the message but we try to just concentrate on on the music thing. Man. I mean, it, nobody's buying records it's in some new format. Nobody's even really buying records. So we just got to make good music and keep interfacing with the fans. And, and if you see us out, pick up a record. Or if you buy any of our records, know you're supporting us, not just like, I'm not going to say any names. It's not, <laughs> you know, a lot of these multinational, like, companies that are in the business of selling anything mm. and music is happens to be one of the products like we're in the business of making great music yeah. but we're coming out with great records right and we're showing up <laughs> and, and doing all that kind of stuff so our job really is getting done you know you rock it every time